and we are recording. So a welcome everybody to the Miss Korean Book Club reading of Top Dog Under Underdog. I'll try that again, Top Dog Underdog by Susan Lord Parks. Uh, we are very excited to have this, have this reading and to share this uh, particular play and this particular playwright. We've got an insane amount of talent working with us today. Um, I, unfortunately, I'm not as good at making jokes about the, the plays as Doran is, so I'm gonna skip this one for now <laughs> and not, not torture everybody. Um, but if, if uh, we can have our participants go ahead and say their names and the characters for whom they are reading, uh, and actually, we can have either either one of you jump in first, and then I'll follow up uh, after both of you. So who wants to go first? Um, Tamika Coleman. I'm reading the part of Lincoln tonight. Yes. And I am Raven Moon. I'll be uh, reading the part of Booth. Excellent. And I'm Andy. I'm a member of the collective, and I am reading the stage directions. So... Uh, without further ado, we will go ahead and begin this reading. Top Dog, Underdog, Scene 1. Thursday evening, a seedily furnished rooming, excuse me, seedily furnished rooming house room. A bed, reclining chair, a small wooden chair, some other stuff, but not much else. Booth, a black man in his early 30s, practices his three-card Monty scam on the classic setup. Two playing cards and the cardboard playing board atop two mismatched milk crates. The moves and accompanying, his moves and accompanying patter are, for the most part, studied and awkward. Watch me close. Watch me close now. You see the red card. Who see the red card? I see the red card. The red card is the winner. Pick the red card, you pick the winner. Pick the black card, you pick the loser. There's the, the loser. Yeah, there's the black card. There's the other loser. There's the uh, red card. The winner. Watch me close. Watch me close now. Red card throws the red cards lightning fast. Three card, that's me. And I'm last. Watch me throw, cause here I go. One good pickle get you in. Two good picks and you go win. See the red card, see the red card. Who see the red card? Don't touch my cards, man. Just point to the one you want. You pick that card, you pick a loser, yeah? That card's a loser. You pick that card, that's the other loser. You pick that card, you pick a winner. Follow that card, you gotta choose that card. You pick a the dark deuce, that's a loser. Other dark deuce. The other loser, red deuce. The, the deuce of hearts, the win it all. Follow the card. I'm going to show you the cards. Two black, but only one heart. Now watch me now. Who sees the red card? Who knows where it's at? Go on. Pick up. Pick up. You point to that card. Put your money down, because you ain't no clown. No. <laughs> ah, you had the card, but you didn't have the heart. Ah, you want to bet $500? Shoo, you must have been watching three card real close. Okay, lay the card in my hand, because three cards, the man. Thank you, mister. This card, you say? Wrong, sucker. Fool, asshole, bastard. I bet your daddy heard you stupid you was and drank himself to death just because he didn't want to have nothing to do with you. I bet your mama seen you when you was born and wish she was dead, sucker. <laughs> and three cop once again wins all the money. What? Cops looking my way, fold up the game and walk away. Sneak out of sight, set up on another corner. Yeah. Yeah. Having won the imaginary loot and dodged the imaginary cops, Booth sets up his equipment and starts practicing his scam all over again. Lincoln comes in quietly. 
He's a black man in his later 30s. He's dressed in an antique frock coat and wears a top hat and fake beard that, it, that is, he is dressed to look like Abraham Lincoln. He surreptitiously walks into the room to stand right behind Booth, who, engrossed in his cars, does not notice Lincoln right away. Watch me close, watch me now. Who see the red card? Who see the red card? I see the red card. The red card is the winner. Pick the red card, you pick the winner. Pick a black card, you pick a loser. There's a loser, yeah, there's the oh, a black card. There's the other loser, there's the red card. There's a winner. Don't touch my cards, man, don't. Don't do that shit. Don't do that shit. Don't do that shit. Booth, sensing someone behind him, whirls around, pulling a gun from his pants. While the presence of Lincoln doesn't surprise him, the Lincoln costume does. And whoa, man, don't ever be doing that shit. Who the fuck you think is coming in my shit all spooked out and shit? You pull that one more time, I'll shoot you. I only had a minute to make the bus. Bullshit. Not completely. I mean, it's either bull or shit, but not a complete lie, so it ain't bullshit, right? Put your gun away. Take off that damn hat, at least. Lincoln takes off the stovepipe hat. Booth puts his gun away. It's cold out there. This thing kept my head warm. I don't like you wearing that bullshit. That shit... That bull, that disguise, that get up, that motherfucking skies. Anywhere in that daddy dick sticking vicinity of my humble abode. Lincoln takes off the beard. Better? Take off that damn coat too. Damn, man. Bad enough you gotta wear that shit all day. You come up in here wearing it. What my woman gonna say? What women? I got a date with Grace tomorrow. She's in love with me again, but she don't know it yet. <laughs> Ain't no man can love her the way I can. She sees you up in that get up, it's gonna reflect bad on me. She could have seen you coming down the street. Shit. Could be standing outside right now, taking her ring off and throwing it on the sidewalk. Booth takes a peek at the window. I got her this ring today. Diamond. Well, diamond-esque. <laughs> but it looks just as good as the real thing. After what size she wore, she says seven. So I got boost and got a size six and a half, right? Show it to her and she love it. And I shove it on her finger and it's as tight fit right so she can't take it off on a whim like she did the last one I gave her. Smooth, right? <laughs> Booth takes another peek out the window. She out there? Nope. Coast is clear. You boosted a ring? Yeah. I thought about spending my inheritance on it, but <laughs> take off that damn coat, man. You making me nervous standing there looking like a spook in that damn face paint. Take it all. You should take all of it all at work and leave it there. I don't bring it home. Someone might steal it. At least take it off there then. Yeah. Lincoln takes off the frock coat and applies cold cream, removing the white face. I was riding the bus Really, I only had a minute to t make my bus, and I was sitting in the arcade thinking, should I change into my street clothes, or should I take the bus? Nobody was in there today anyway. Middle of the week, middle of winter, not like an, on weekends. Weekends, the place is packed, so I'm riding the bus home, and this kid asked me for my autograph. I pretended I didn't hear him at first. I'd had a long day, but he kept asking. They'd just done Lincoln in history class, and he knew all about him. He'd been to the arcade, but I don't know. For some reason, he was tripping because there was Honest Abe right beside him on the bus. I wanted to tell him to go fuck himself, but then I got a look at him, a little rich kid, born on Easy Street. You know the type. So I waited until I could tell he really wanted it, the autograph, and I told him he could have it for 10 bucks. 
I was going to say five because of the Lincoln connection, but something in me made me ask for 10. <laughs> Bruh, he didn't have a 10. All he had was a penny. So you took the penny? <laughs> All he had was a 20. So I took the 20 and I told him to meet me on the bus tomorrow and Honest Abe would bring him his change. Shit. So that <laughs> shit is right. <laughs> What'd you do with the 20? Bought drinks at Lucky's. Around for everybody. They got a kick out of the getup. You should have called me down. Shit. <laughs> Next time, bro. You making bookshelves with the milk crates? You making bookshelves? Yeah, big bro. I'm making bookshelves. Big bookshelves. Shit. <laughs> What's the cardboard part for? Versatility. Oh. I was thinking... We don't got no bookshelves. We don't got no dining room tables. So I'm making a sort of modular unit. You put the books in the bottom and the tabletop on the top. We can eat and score our books. We could put the photo album in there. Booth gets the raggedy photo album and puts it in the milk crate. You'd sit there, I'd sit on the edge of the bed, gathered around the dining room table like old times. We just gotta get some books, but that's great. Booth, that's real great. Don't be calling me Booth no more, okay? You changing your name? Maybe. Booth? What to? Oops. What to? <laughs> I'm not ready to rebuild it yet. <laughs> you already decided on something? Uh, maybe. You gonna call yourself something African? That'd be cool. Only pick something that's easy to spell and pronounce, man, because you know some of them African names, I mean, okay, I'm down with the power to the people thing, but no one's gonna hire you if they can't say your name. And some of them fellas who got the African names, no one can say their names and they can't say their names neither. I mean, you don't want your new handle to obstruct your employment possibilities. Link it. You bring Shango would be a good name. The name of the Thunder God. If you ain't decided already, I'm just throwing it in the pot. I brought Chinese. Cool. Oops. We we switch lines. <laughs> Try the table out. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Booth. They sit at the new table. The food is far away near the door. I buy it. You set it up. That's the deal. That's the deal, right? You like this place? It's all right. But a little cramped sometimes, right? You don't hear me complain, although that recliner sometimes. Booth, man. No, booth. Right. Man, I'm too old to be sleeping in that chair. It's my place. You don't got a place. Cookie, she threw you out, and you can't seem to get another woman. You're lucky I let you stay. Every Friday, you say mi casa es su casa. Every Friday, you come home with your paycheck. Today is Thursday, and I can tell you, brother, it's a long way from Friday to Friday. All kinds of things can happen. All kinds of bad feelings can surface and erupt while your little brother waits for you to bring in your share. I got my Thursday head on. Link, go get the food. Lincoln doesn't budge. You don't got no running water in here, man. Hmm. So? You don't got no toilet. You don't got no sink. Bathroom's down the hall. You living in the third world, fool. Hey, I'll get the food. <laughs> uh, Lincoln goes over to get the food. He sees a stray card on the floor and examines it without touching it. He brings the food over, putting it nicely on the table. You been playing cards? Yeah. Solitaire? That's right. I'm getting pretty good at it. That soup and that sauce. I got you the meat and I got me the scrimps. I wanted the scrimps. You said you wanted the meat. This morning when I left, you said you wanted the meat. Here, man, take the scrimps, no sweat. They eat Chinese food from styrofoam containers, cans of soda, fortune cookies. Lincoln eats slowly and carefully. Booth eats ravenously. 
You're getting good at that solitaire. Yeah. How about we play a hand after eating? Solitaire? Poker or rummy or something. You, you know I don't touch the cards, man. Just for fun. I don't touch the cards. How about for the money? You don't got no money. All the money you got, I bring in here. I got my inheritance. That's like saying you don't got no money because you ain't never going to do nothing with it. So it's like you don't got it. At least I still got mine. You blew yours. Booth. You like, you like the, the scrimps? No. Oh, whoops. No, you good. All right. <laughs> What's your fortune? Waste not, want not. What's yours? Your luck will change. He finishes eating. He turns his back to Lincoln and fiddles around with the cards, keeping them on the bed just out of Lincoln's sight. He mutters the three-card patter under his breath. His moves are still clumsy. Every once in a while, he darts a look over at Lincoln, who does his best to ignore him. Watch me close. Watch me close now. Who see the red card? Who see the red card? I see the red card. The red card is the winner. Pick the red card. You pick the winner. Pick of the black card. You pick of the loser. There's the loser. Yeah, there's the black card, and there's the other loser, and there's the red card, the winner. Cop C, stick, cop C, go on. Shit. Go on, good, pick all you get. Two good picks, and you get, good, get a good win. Don't touch my cards, man. Just point to the one you want. You pick the card, you pick a loser. You pick the cards, a loser. You pick the card, that's the other loser. You pick that card, you pick a winner. Follow that card. You got to chase that card. You want to hustle three card, Monty? You got to do it right. You got to break it down. Practice it in smaller bits. You're trying to do the whole thing at once. That's why you keep fucking it up. Tell me. No, I'm just saying you want to do it. You got to do it right. And if you're going to do it right, you got to work on it in smaller bits. That's all. You and me, we could team up and do it together. We clean up, I think. I'll, I'll clean up, bro. Lincoln cleans up. As he clears the food, Booth goes back to using the table for its original purpose. My new game, my new name, three card, three card. You got it. You wanted to know it, so now you know it. Three card Monty by three card. Call me three card from here on out. Three card. Shit. I'm getting everybody to call me three card. Grace likes three card better than Booth. She says three cards get something to it. Anybody not call me three card gets a bullet. You're too much, man. I'm making a point. Point made, three card, point made. Lincoln picks up his guitar, plays at it. Oh, come on, man. We could make money, you and me. Throwing down the cards, three card and link, look out. We could clean up. You and me, you could would throw the cards and I'd be your switch man. The one in the crowd who looks like just an innocent passerby, who looks like just a, another player, like just another customer, but who gets intimate connections with you. The dealer, the one throwing the cards, the main man, I'd be the one who brings the crowd in. I'd be the one who makes them want to play their money down. You do your moves and I do mine. You turn your head and I turn the card. It ain't as easy as all that. There's... We could be a team, man, raking the money. Sure, there'd be some cats out there with a fast eye, some brothers and sisters who would watch real close and pick the right card. And so there'd be some days where we'd lose money. But most of the days, we'd come out up on top, pat, pockets bulging, 
plenty of cash and the ladies would be thrilling. You could afford to get laid. <laughs> Grace would be all over me again. <laughs> I, I thought you said she was all over you. She is. She is. I'm seeing her tomorrow, but today we got to solidify the shit twixt you and me, big brother Link and little brother Boots. Three card. Yeah, scheming and dreaming. No one throws the cards like you, Link, and with your moves and my magic and we get Grace and a girl for you to round out the posse, we be golden, bro. Am I right? Lincoln. Am I right? I don't touch the cards, three cards. I don't touch the cards no more. Booth. I'm sorry. Booth. Lincoln. Booth. You know what mama told me when she was packing to leave? You was at school, motherfucker. You was at school. You got up that morning and sat down in your regular place and read the cereal box while dad read the sports section and mom brought you your dick toast and but then you got the got on the damn school bus cuz you didn't have to, the sense to do nothing else you was into your shit that you didn't have the sense to feel nothing else going on. I had the sense to go back because I was feeling something going on. I was feeling something changing. So I cut school that day. I cut school that day like you did almost every day. She was putting her stuff in bags. She had all them nice suitcases but she was putting her stuff in bags packing up her shit she told me to look out for you i told her i was the little brother and the big brother should look out for the little brother she just said it again that i should look out for you yeah so who is gonna look out for me not like you care here I am, interested in an economic opportunity, willing to work hard, willing to take some risk, and all you got to say is all that shit-eating, motherfucking, pathetic, limp dick, Uncle Tom. All you can tell me is how you don't do mm, no more what I be wanting to do. Here I am trying to earn a living and you standing in my way. You standing in my way, Link. I'm sorry. Yeah. You sorry, all right. I can't be hustling no more, bro. Mm, 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 mm. What you do all day ain't no hustle. It's honest work. Dressing up like some crack ass white man. Some dead president and letting people shoot at you sounds like a hustle to me. People know the real deal. When people know the real deal, it ain't a hustle. We do the car game, people. We will know the real deal. Sometimes we will win. Sometimes they will win. They fast, they win. We faster, we win. I ain't going back to that, bro. I ain't going back. You play honest, Abe. You ain't going back, but you going all the way back. Back to the way back. Back to way back. Then when folks was slaves and shit. Don't push me. Lincoln. You're going to have to leave. I'll be gone tomorrow. Good. Because this was only supposed to be a temporary arrangement. I will be gone tomorrow. Oh, shit. Sorry, guys. Good. Booth sits on his bed. Lincoln, sitting in his easy chair with his guitar, plays and sings.
Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> my dear mother left me. My father's gone away. My dear mother left me. And my father's gone away. They ain't not no money. They ain't got no place to stay. They ain't got no money and I ain't got no place to stay. My best girl, she threw me out into the street. My favorite horse, they ground them into meat. I'm feeling cold from my head down to my feet. My luck was bad, but now it just turned worse. My luck was bad, but now it just turned worse. Don't tell me up. Don't call me up, no doctor. Just call me up a hearse. You just made that up? I had it in my head for a few days. It looks good. Thanks. Daddy told me once why we got the names we do. Yeah? Yeah. He was drunk when he told me, or maybe I was drunk when he told me. Anyway, he told me. May not be true, but he told me. Why he named us both Lincoln and Bo Booth. How come? How come, man? It was id his idea of a joke. Both men relax back as the lights fade. Scene two. Friday evening, the very next day, Booth comes in looking like he is bundled up against the cold. He makes sure his brother isn't home, then stands in the middle of the room. From his big coat sleeves, he pulls out one new shoe, then another. From another sleeve come two more shoes. He then slithers out a belt from each sleeve. He removes his coat. Underneath, he wears a very nice new suit. He removes the jacket and pants, revealing another new suit underneath. The suits still have the price tags on them. He takes two neckties and a bottle of whiskey from his pockets and two folded shirts from the back of his pants. He pulls a magazine from the front of his pants. He's clearly had a busy day of shoplifting. He lays one suit on Lincoln's easy chair. The other he leaves out on his own bed. And he goes out into the hall, returning with a folding screen, which he sets up between the bed and the recliner, creating two separate spaces. He sets up the whiskey and two glasses on the stacked milk crates. He hears footsteps and sits down in a small wooden chair, reading for the magazine. Or re reading the magazine. Lincoln, dressed in street clothes, comes in. Ta-da! Lord almighty! Pa! I smells money! Show sure enough, Ma. Papa, gun, Papa done brung home the bacon. Bring that, bring that, bring that! With a series of very elaborate moves, Lincoln brings the money over to Booth. Put it in my hands, Pa. I want you to smell it first, Ma. Put it in my nose, then, Pa. Take yourself a good long whiff of them greenbacks. Oh, Lord! Lord Almighty, I'm a vapor. Give me, give me a, give me medicine. Lincoln quickly pours two large glasses of whiskey. Don't die on me, Ma. I'm fading fast, Pa. Think, <laughs> think of the children, Ma. Think of them. Think of the farm. One, two, three. Both <laughs> men gulp their drinks simultaneously. <sighs> <sighs> Lots of laughing and slapping on the backs. <laughs> <laughs> Budget it out, man. Budget it out. You in a hurry? Yeah, I want to see how much we got for the week. You rush in here, don't even look around. Good, could be fucking an A-bomb in the middle of the floor. You wouldn't notice. Your wife, Cookie. Ex-wife. Could be in my bed, you wouldn't notice. Was <laughs> once. Look, the fuck around, please. <laughs> Lincoln looks around and sees the new suit on his chair. Wow. It's yours. Shit. Got myself one too. Boosted? Yeah, I boosted them. They stole from a big ass department store. That store takes in more money in a day than we will in our whole life. I stole and I stole generously. I got one for me. I got one for you. Shoes, belts, shirts, ties, socks in the shoes and everything. Got, your, got that screen too. You all right, man? 
just because I ain't good at you at cards don't mean I can't do nothing. Let's try them on. They stand in their separate sleeping spaces. Booth near his bed, Lincoln near his recliner, and try on their new clothes. I'm going to wear mine tonight. Gracelle sees me in this, and she going to ask me to uh, marry her. <laughs> I got you in the blue, and I got me the brown. I walked in there and walked out, and they didn't as much as that, and I... That's how smooth little bro be, Link. You did good. You did real good, three card. All in a day's work. They say the clothes make the man. All day long, I wear that getup, but that don't make me who I am. Old black coat, not even real old, just fake old. It's not worn, it's got worn spots on the elbows, little raggedy places that'll break through into holes before the winter's out. Shiny strips around the cuffs and the collar. Dust from the cap guns on the left shoulder where they shoot him, where they shoot me. I should say, but I never feel like they shoot me. The fella who had the gig before I had it wore the same coat. When I got, when I got the job, they had the get up hanging there waiting for me. Said the fella before me just took it off one day and never came back. Remember how dad's clothes used to hang in the closet? <laughs> Until you took them outside and burned them. <laughs> he had some nice stuff what he didn't spend on booze he spent on women what he didn't spend on them too he spent on clothes he had some nice stuff I would look at his stuff and calculate the how long it would take till I was big enough to fit in it then you went and burn it all up I got tired of looking at him without him in them. Hmm. They said, the fellow before me, he took off the get up one day, hung it up real nice and never came back. And as they offered me the job saying, of course, I would have to wear a little makeup and accept less than what they would offer a, another guy. Go on, say it, white. They pay you less than they pay a white guy. I said to myself, that's exactly what I would do. Wear it out and then leave it hanging there and not come back. But until then, I would make a living at it. But it don't make me. Worn suit coat, not even worn by the fool that I'm supposed to be playing, but making fools out of all those folks who come crowding in for their chance to play at something great. Fake beard, top hat, don't make me into no Lincoln. I was Lincoln on my own before any of that. The men finish dressing. They style and profile. Sharp, huh? Very sharp. You look sharp too, man. You look like the real you. Most of the time you walking around all bedraggled and shit. You look good. Like you used to look back in the day when you had Cookie in love with you. And all the women in the world was eating out of your head. This is real nice, man. I don't know where I'm going to wear it, but it's real nice. Just wear it around. It'll make you feel good. And when you feel good, you'll meet someone nice. Me, I ain't interested in meeting no one nice. I mean, I only got eyes for grace. You think she'll go for me in this thing? I think the tie you gave me will go better with what you got on. Yeah. Grace like bright colors, don't she? My tie's bright. Yours is too subdued. Yeah. Give me your tie. You gonna take back a gift? I stole the damn thing, didn't I? Give me it. Yours and I'll give you mine. Do the switch neckties. The switch neckties. Booth is pleased. Lincoln is more pleased. Do the budget. Right? Okay, let's see. We got three quarter dollars. We put a hundred aside for rent. A hundred a week times four weeks makes the rent. And we don't want the we don't spent. have on the rent spent. <laughs> that leaves 
214. We put aside $30 for electric, leaving 184. We put aside 50 for the phone, leaving 134. We don't got a phone. We pay our bill, they'll turn it back on. We don't need a phone. How you gonna get a woman if you don't got a phone? Women these days are more cautious, more, what do you call it? More circumspect. You got into a club looking like a fast daddy, got a Philly to give the numerophono, and gone is the days when she's just gonna give you the number and don't ask for yours. Like a woman's gonna call me. She don't want to call you, and she just doing the preliminary survey of the property. Shit, Link. You don't know nothing no more. She gives you her number and asks for yours. You give her your number, the phone number of your home, thereby telling her three things. A, you got a home. That is, you ain't no smooth talking, smooth dressing, homeless Joe. Two, that you is in possession of a telephone and a working telephone number, which is to say that you got the cash and the wherewithal to acquire for yourself the world's most revolutionary communication apparatus and you together enough to pay your bills. What's three? You give her your number. You telling her that it's tool to call you should she so please. That is that you ain't got no wife or wife approximation in the premises. <laughs> 50 for the phone, leaving 134. We put aside 40 for the medicine. The price went up. Two bucks more a bottle. Well, we put aside 50 then. That covers the bills. We got 84 left. 40 for the meals together during the week, leaving 44. 30 for me, 14 for you, and I got a woman. Got to impress tonight. Shah. You didn't take out for the phone last week. Last week I was pressed. This week things looking up for the both of us. <laughs> They're talking about cutbacks at the arcade. I only been there eight months, so. So don't sweat it, man. We'll find something else. Not nothing like this. I like the job. This is sit down, you know, easy work. I just got to sit there all day. Folks come in, kill phony, honest Abe with the phony pistol. I can sit there and let my mind travel. Think about the women. <laughs> Sometimes all around the whole arcade is buzzing and popping. The whirring of the duck shoot, baseball, smacking the back wall when someone misses the stack of cans. Some wo woman getting happy because her fella just won the ring toss. The boss playing the barker talking up the fake freaks, the smell of the ocean and cotton candy and rat shit. And in the middle of all that, I can just sit and let my head go quiet, make up songs, make plans, forget. You should come down again. Once was plenty, but thanks. Your best customer. He come in today? Oh, yeah, he was there. He shoot you? He shot Honest Abe. Yup. He talked to you? In a whisper. Shoots on the left, whispers on the right. What do you say this time? Does the show, does the show stop when no one's watching or does the show go on? He's getting deep. <laughs> yeah. What do you say that one time? Your only self? Your when only no one self? When no one's watching, yeah. That's deep. He's a brother, right? I think so. He knows your brother. I don't know. He's a deep black brother. Yeah, he makes the day interesting. That's a fucked up job you got. It's a living. But you ain't living. I'm alive, ain't I? One day I was throwing the cards, next day Lonnie died, somebody shot him. 
I knew I was next, so I quit. I saved my life. The arcade gig is the first lucky break I've ever had, and I've actually grown to like the work, and now they're talking about cutting me. You was lucky with the cards. Lucky? Ain't nothing lucky about the cards. Cards ain't luck. Cards is work. Cards is skill. Ain't never nothing lucky about the cards. I don't want to lose my job. Then you got to jazz it up your act, you know? Elaborate your moves, you know? You always too stiff with it. You can't just sit there. Maybe then they'll shoot you. You know, leap up. Flail your arms, then fall down and wiggle around and shit. And they got to shoot you more than once, you know? Bloom, 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 bloom. Help me practice. I'll sit there like I do at work and you be like one of the tourists. No, thanks. My paycheck's on the line, man. I got a date. Practice, y'all. I got a rendezvous with Grace. Shit, she's so sweet. She makes my teeth hurt. Link, <sighs> how about dripping me an extra five spot? It's the biggest night of my life. Booth. Thanks. No sweat. How about I run through it with you when I got get back? Put on your get up and practice till then. Sure. Booth leaves. Lincoln stands there alone. He takes off his shoes, giving them a shine. He takes off his socks and his fancy suit, hanging it neatly over his little wooden chair. He takes his get-up out of the shopping bag. He puts it on, slowly, like an actor preparing for a great role. Frock coat, pants, beard, top hat, necktie. He leaves his feet there. The top hat has an elastic band which he positions securely underneath his chin. He picks up the white pancake makeup and decides against it. He sits. He pretends to get shot, flings himself on the floor, and thrashes around. He gets up, considering giving the new moves another try, but instead pours himself a big glass of whiskey and sits there drinking. Scene three. Much later, that same Friday evening, the recliner is extended to its maximum horizontal position and Lincoln lies there asleep. He wakes with a start. He is horrific, bleary-eyed, and hungover in his full Lincoln regalia. He takes a deep breath, realizes where he is, and reclines again, going back to sleep. Booth comes in full of swagger. He slams the door, trying to wake his brother, who is dead to the world. He opens the door and slams it again. This time, Lincoln wakes up as hungover and horrid as before. Booth swaggers around. His moves are exaggerated, rooster-like. He walks around and walks round and round Lincoln, making sure his brother sees him. You hurt yourself? I had me an evening to remember. You look like you hurt yourself. Grace. 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 She wants me back. She wants me back so bad. She wiped her hand over the past where she wasn't together. Just so she could say we wait, we ain't never been apart. She wiped her hand over our breakup. She wiped her hand over our childhood. She wiped her hand over our teenage years, her first boyfriend, just so she could say that she wasn't mine, that she wasn't mine from the end of time. That's great, man. And all that shit I put her through, she wiped it clean. And the woman I saw while I was seeing here. Wiped clean too? Mr. Clean. Mr. Mr. Clean. Where'd you take her? We was over at her place. I brought the food. Stopped at the best place I could find and snuffed my coat with the only the best. We had the music and we had the candlelight. We had. She let you do it? Of course she let me do it. <laughs> she let you do it without a rubber? Yeah. Full <laughs> shit. I put my foot down and she melted. And she was, uh, she was something else. I don't want to get 
you jealous though, so. Go ahead, I don't mind. Well, you know what she looks like. She walks on by and the emergency room fills up because all the guys get whiplash from looking at her. That's right, that's right. Well, ah, she comes to the door wearing nothing but her little ringery ears up to the food. I thought like, there's no tomorrow and there goes and ears on me. Go on. I don't want to make you feel bad, man. It's all right, go on. Well, uh, you know what she's like. Wild, good looking. She's so sweet, my teeth hurt. A sex machine. Yeah. A hotsy totsy. Yeah. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. Oh, yeah. That's right. She let me do her how I want it. And no rubber. Go on. You don't want to hear the mushy shit. Sure I do. You hate the mushy shit. You always hated the mushy shit. <laughs> I've changed. Go ahead. You had an evening to remember. Remember? I was just here alone, sitting here, drinking. Go ahead. Tell Link the stink. How'd you do her? Doggy style. <laughs> Amazing grace. Mm. Mm. In front of a mirror. So you could see her? Her face, her breasts, her back, her ass. Grace has got a great ass. All right. It's all right. Amazing Grace. Ruth goes into his bed area and takes off his suit, tossing the clothes on the floor. She said, next time, I'm going to have to use a rubber. She let me have my way this time, but she said that next time, I'd have to put my boots on. I'm sure you can talk her out of it. Yeah. What kind of rubber you use? I mean, when you was with a uh, cookie. We didn't use rubbers. We was married, man. Oh, right, right. Uh, but you had other women on the side. What kind of what kind of you use when you was with them? Magnums. That's the kind I picked up for the next time. Grace was real strict about it. Magnums. While Booth, is, uh, while Booth sits on his bed fiddling with his box of condoms, Lincoln sits in his chair and resumes drinking. They're for the larger men. Right, right. Lincoln keeps drinking as Booth, sitting in the privacy of his bedroom, flips through a girly magazine. That's right. Grace is real different from the fly-by-night gals I was making do with. She's in school, making something of herself, studying cosmetology. You should see what she can do with a woman in curls, hair in curls. Too bad you ain't no woman. What? You could get yours done for free, I mean. Yeah, <laughs> she got this way of sitting, of talking, that everything that she does is, she's just so hot. We was together two years, then we broke up. I had little employment difficulty and the needed time to turn. And she's through thinking now. That's right. Booth. What you doing back there? Oops. Rested. <laughs> that girl wore me out. You want some medicine? No, thanks. Come practice my moves with me then. Let's hit it tomorrow, okay? I've been waiting. I've been waiting. I got all dressed up and you said if I waited up, come on, man. They're going to replace me with a wax dummy. No shit. That's what they're talking about. Probably just talk, but come on, man. I even lent you $5. I'm tired. Booth. 
You didn't get shit tonight. You jealous, man. You just jealous. You laying over there, your balls blue is my boosted suit. Laying over there waiting for me to go back to sleep or black out so I won't hear you rustling the pages of your fuck book. Fuck you, man. I was over there looking for something the other week and there's like a hundred fuck books under your bed and they're matted together like bad fro, bro, because you spunked in the pages and didn't wipe them off. I'm hot. I need constant sexual release. If I wasn't taking care of myself by myself, I would be out there running around on the town which costs cash that I don't have. So I wouldn't be doing any worse. I'd be out there doing what, who knows what, shooting people and shit out of a need of unresolved sexual release. I'm a hot man. I ain't apologizing for it. When I don't got a woman, I got to make do. Not like you, Link. When you don't got a woman, you just sit there letting your shit fester, your dick. If you ain't balled off yet, it's hanging there between your legs. Little white face, shoveled up, blank shooting grub woman, grub worm. As goes the man, goes, so goes the man's dick. That's what I say. At least my shit's intact. You a limp dick, jealous, white face motherfucker whose wife dumped him because he couldn't get it up and she told him so. Come crawl into me because she needed a man. <laughs> I give it to the grace God tonight. So good night. Good night. Booth. Lincoln. Booth. Lincoln. Booth. I think those are pauses, but that's okay. Okay, uh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's, I'm, I'm loving it. Oh uh, Lincoln, <laughs> Lincoln sitting in his chair, Booth lying in bed. Time passes. Booth peeks out to see if Lincoln is asleep. Lincoln is watching for him. You can hustle three-card Monty without me, you know. I'm planning to. I could contact my old crew. You could work with them. Lonnie ain't around no more, but there's the rest of them. They're good. I can get my own crew. I don't need your crew. Bunch of has-beens. I can get my own crew. Shit. My crew's experienced. We used to pull down a thousand a day. That's seven G a week. That was years ago. They probably do twice, three times that now. I got my own connections. Thank you. They take you on in a heartbeat with my say. My say still counts with them. They know you from before when you tried to hang with us but weren't ready. They know you from then, but I'd talk you up. I'd say you're my bro, which they know. And I'd say you'd been working the West Coast, little towns, Mexican border, taking tourists. I'll tell them you got moves like I dreamed of having. Meanwhile, you'd be working out your shit right there, right in this room, getting good and getting better every day. So when I did do the reintroductions, you'd have some remarkable shit. You'd be passable. <laughs> I'd be more than passable. I'd be the be all and end all. You'd be the be all end all. And you'd have my say if you're interested. Could do. You'd have to get a piece. The all pack pistols, bro. I got a piece. You'd have to be packing something more substantial than that pop gun three card. Those hustlers is upper echelon hustlers. They pack upper echelon heat, not no Saturday night shit now. <laughs> what you know of heat? You ain't hung with those guys for six, seven years. You swore them off. Threw your heat in the river and you don't touch the cards. I know about more than he, I, I know more about heat than you know, Belle. I'm around guns every day at the arcade. They've all been reworked, so they only fire caps, but I see guns every day. Lots of guns. What kinds? You've been there. You've seen them. Shiny, deadly metal, each with their own deadly personality. Maybe I could visit over there 
I'd boost whatever them guns and rework them to make them shoot for real again. What kind do you think would make the best to suit my personality? You ain't stealing nothing from the arcade. I go in there and steal. I want to go in there and steal. I go in there and steal. It ain't worth it. They don't shoot nothing but blanks. Yeah, like you. Shooting blanks. <laughs> you ever wonder if someone's going to come in there with a real gun? A real gun with a real slugs? Someone with a uh, axe? the grind or something no someone who hates you come in there guns you down and gets gone before anybody finds out i don't got no enemies your ex the cookie don't hate me your best customer some miscellaneous stranger i can't be worrying about the actions of miscellaneous strangers but there they come day in, day out, for a chance to shoot honest day. Who are you mostly? I don't really look. You must see something. I'm supposed to be staring straight ahead, watching a pay play like Abe was. All day goes by and you never take a sneak peek at who be pulling the trigger? Pulled in by his own curiosity, Booth has come out of his bed area to stand in the dividing line between the two spaces. It's pretty dark to keep the illusion of the whole thing. But on the wall opposite where I sit, there's a little electrical box, like a fuse box, silver metal. It's got a dent in it like somebody hit it with a fist. Big old dent. So everything reflected and it gets reflected upside down, like you're looking in a spoon. And that's where I can see them, the assassins. Not behind me yet, but I can hear him coming, coming in with his gun in hand. The gun he already picked out up front when he paid his fare, coming on in, but not behind me yet. His dress shoes making too much noise on the carpet and the carpet's too thin. Boss should get a new one, but he's cheap. Not behind me yet, not behind me yet cheap light bulb just above my head there he is standing behind me standing in position standing upside down there's some feet shapes on the floor so he knows just where he ought to stand so he won't miss the gun is always cold winter or summer the gun is always cold and when the gun touches me he can feel that i'm warm and he knows i'm alive and if i'm alive then he can shoot me dead and for a minute with him hanging back there behind me, it's real. Me looking at him upside down and him looking at me like Lincoln. Then he shoots. I slump down and close my eyes and he goes out the other way. More come in, a whole day full. Bunches of kids, little good for nothings in they school uniforms. Businessmen smelling like two for one martinis. Tourists in they theme park t-shirts trying to catch it all on film. Housewives with their mouths closed tight, shooting more than once. They all get so into it. I do my best for them. And now they talking about cutting me, replacing me with a wax dummy. You just got to show your boss that you can do things a wax dummy can't do. You too dry with it. You got to add some spice. Shit. Like what? Like when they shoot you. I don't know. Scream or something. Scream? Booth plays the killer without using his gun. Ah, try it. Ugh. Yeah, it'll be more like a killer. Bang! Ah! That's good. A wax dummy can scream. They can put a voice box in it and make it like it's screaming. You can curse. Try it. Bang! Motherfucking cocksucker! That's good, motherfucker. <laughs> they, they ain't going for that, though. You practice rolling and wiggling on the floor? A little. Let me see. Bang! 
Lincoln slumps down, falls on the floor, and silently wiggles around. You look more like a worm on the sidewalk. Move your arms. Good. Now scream or something. Ah! <laughs> a little laughter or a little tougher than that. You sound like you're fucking. Ah! <laughs> Hold your head or something where I shot you. Good. And look at me, and I'm an assassin. I am Booth. Come on, man. This is life and death. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> there I am. There I am. OK, this is life and death. Go all out. Lincoln goes all out. Cool, man. That's cool. That's enough. What do you think? I don't know, man. Something about it. I don't know. I was looking too real or something. God damn you. They don't want it looking too real. I'd scare the customers. Then I'd be up for sure. You're trying to get me fired. <laughs> I'm trying to help. Cross my heart. People are funny about they Lincoln shit. It's historical. People like the historical shit in a certain way. They like it to unfold the way they folded it up neatly like a book. Not raggedy and bloody and screaming, you trying to get me fired. I am a brother playing Lincoln. It's a stretch for anyone's imagination. And it ain't easy for me neither. Every day I put on that shit, I leave my own shit at the door and I put on that shit and I go out there and I make it work. I make it look easy, but it's hard. That shit is hard, but it works because I work it. And you trying to get me fired. I swore off them cars, took nowhere jobs, drank then cookie threw me out what the fuck was i gonna do i seen that hope wanted sign and i went up in there and looked good and the get up and agreed to do the white face and they really dug it and that me and honest abe got the same thing so it's a sit down job with benefits i don't want to get fired they won't give me a good reference if i get fired if you knew was gonna get fired then well then you could and me could hustle the cards together. We'd have to support ourselves somehow. Just show me how to do the hook part of the hustle, of the card hustle, man. The part where the dealer looks away, but somehow he sees. I, I couldn't remember if I wanted to. Sure you could. No. Nightmare. Yeah? Lincoln stretches out in his recliner. Booth stands over him, waiting for him to get up to change his mind, but Lincoln is fast asleep. Booth covers him with a blanket and goes to his bed, turning off the lights as he goes. He quietly rummages underneath his bed for a girly magazine, which, as the lights fade, he reads with great interest. Scene four. Saturday, just before dawn. Lincoln gets up, looks around. Booth is fast asleep, dead to the world. No fucking running water. He stumbles around the room looking for something which he finally finds, a plastic cup which he uses as a urinal. He finishes peeing and gets out and finds an out-of-the-way place to soak the cup. He claws at his Lincoln getup, removing it and tearing it in the process. He strokes down to his t-shirt and shorts. He falling asleep in this damn shit. Shit. I ripped the beard. I could just hear him tomorrow. Busiest day of the week. They look at me over to make sure I'm presentable. They got a slew of guys working, but... I'm the only one they look over every day. Your beard's ripped, pal. Sure, we'll get you a new one, but it's gonna be coming out of your pay. Shit. I should quit right then and there. I'd yank off the beard, throw it on the ground, and stomp it. Then they go strangle the fucking boss. Then go strangle the fucking boss. That'd be good. My hands around his neck and his bug eyes bugging out. You've been ripping me off since I took this job, and now I'm gonna have to take it out of your pay, motherfucker? Shit. Sit down job with benefits, hustling, shit. I was good. I was great. Hell, I was the be all end all. I was throwing cards like throwing cards was made for me, made for me and me alone. I was the best anyone ever seen, coast to coast. Everybody said so. And I never lost, not once, not one time, not never. That's how much them cards was mine. I was the be all end all. I was that good. 
then you woke up one day and you didn't have the taste for it no more. Like something in you knew, like something in you knew it was time to quit, quit. Like you was still ahead. Something in you was telling you, but hell's no, not link the stink. So I went out there and threw one more time. What the fuck? And Lonnie died. Got yourself a good job. And the arcade lets you go. When the arcade lets you go, you'll get another good job. I don't got to spend my whole life hustling. There's more to Link than that. More to me than some cheap hustle. More to life than cheating some idiot out of his paycheck on his life savings. Like that joker and his wife from out of town always wanted to see the big city. I said you could see the bigger end of the big city with a little more cash. And if they was fast enough, faster than me. And here I slowed down my moves. I slowed them way down. And me, and here I slowed down my moves. I slowed them. And my Lonnie, my right hand, my stick man, Lonnie could draw a customer in like nothing else. Lonnie could draw a fly from fresh shit. He could draw Adam out of Eve just with the look he had. Lonnie always got folks playing. And somebody shot him. They don't know who, nobody knows, nobody cares. He took that man and his wife for hundreds, no thousands. We took them for everything they had and everything they ever wanted to have. We took a father for the money he was going to get his kid's new bike with, and he cried in the street while we vanished. He took a mother's welfare check. She pulled a knife on us, and we ran. She threw it, but her aim weren't shit. People shopping, greedy, thinking they could take me, and they got took instead. Swore off the cards, something inside me telling me, but I was good. He sees a packet of cards. He studies them like an alcoholic would study a drink. Then he reaches for them, but chooses not to pick them up. Instead, he simply stands over the Monty setup, attending. Still got my moves. Still got my touch. Still got my chops. The feel of it. And I ain't hurting no one. God, Link is just here hustling himself. Let's see what you got. He moves the cards slowly at first, aimlessly, as if he's just making little ripples in water. The game has a strong undertow, and it draws him deeper into it. Lean in close and watch me now. Who see the black card? Who see the black card? I see the black card. Card, black card's the winner. Pick the black card, that's the winner. Pick the red card, that's the loser. Pick the other red card, that's the other loser. Pick the black card, you pick the winner. Watch me as I throw the cards. Here we go. Even though Lincoln speaks softly, Booth wakes and unbeknownst to Lincoln listens intently. Who see the black card? Who see the black card? You pick the red card, you pick the loser. You pick that red card, you pick a loser. You pick the black card, the deuce of spades, you pick a winner. Who sees the deuce of spades? The one who sees it never fades. Watch me now as I throw the cards. Red losers, black winner, follow the deuce of spades. Chase the black deuce, dark deuce will get you the win. 10 will get you 20, 20 will get you 40. The pull of the game is very strong. Suddenly, like he's a junkie needing his fix. Uh, nothing else is as important as getting his hands on those cards again. It's as if the cards are playing him. He breaks, snatching up the deck, picking up three cards and throwing them down. I'm going to show you the cards. Two red cards, but only one spade. Dark winner in the center and the red losers on the sides. Pick a red card, you got a loser. Pick the other red card, you got a loser. Pick the black card, you got a winner. One good pick will get you in. Two good picks and you're going to win. Watch me. Watch me. Come on, watch me now. Who sees the winner? Who knows where it's at? You do? You sure? You go on then. Put your money where your mouth is. Put your money down. You ain't no clown. No? Ah, you had the card, but you didn't have the heart. Watch me now as I throw the cards. Watch me real close. Okay, man, you know which card is the deuce of spades? Was you watching? Link's lightning fast express. Was you watching Link because he the best? So you sure, huh? Point it out first, then place your bet. Link will show you your winner. $500, you the man of the hour. You the man with the power. You must have been watching Link real close. You must be the man who know the most. Okay, 
lay the cash in my hand because Link the Man, thank you, mister. This card, you say? Ha, wrong. That's the show. We got to go. Knowing he's in too deep, Lincoln drops the cards and quickly moves away from the Monty setup. He stands a safe distance away at the edge of his easy chair, but he can't take his eyes off the game. God help me. Scene five. Several days have passed. It's now Wednesday night. Uth is sitting in his brand new suit. The Monty setup is, so, is nowhere in sight. In its place is a table with two nice chairs. The table is covered with a lovely tablecloth, and there are nice plates, silverware, champagne glasses, and candles. All the makings of a very romantic dinner for two. The whole apartment is, in fact, in fact takes its cue from the table. It's been cleaned up considerably. New curtains are the windows and a doily-like object in the recliner. Booth sits at the table, darting his eyes around, making sure everything is looking good. Yeah. He notices some of his girly magazines visible from underneath his bed. He goes over and nudges them out of sight. He sits back down. He notices that they're still visible. He goes over and nudges them some more, kicking them finally. Then he takes the spread from his bed and pulls it down, hiding them. He sits back down. He gets up, checks the champagne on much melted ice, checks the food. Food's getting cold, Grace. Don't worry, man. She'll get here. She'll get here. He sits back down. He goes over to the bed, checks it for its springiness, smooths down the bedspread, double checks two matching silk dressing gowns, very expensive, marked his and hers, lays the dressing gowns across the bed again, sits back down. He can't help but notice the visibility of the girly magazines again. He goes to the bed, kicks them fiercely, then on his hands and knees shoves them. Then he begins to get under the bed to push them, but remembers his nice clothing takes up his jacket. After a beat, he removes his pants, and in this half-dressed way, he crawls under the bed to give those telltale magazines a good and final shove. Lincoln comes in. At first, Booth, still, at first Booth, still stripped down to his underwear, thinks it's his date. When he realizes it's his brother, he does his best to keep Lincoln from entering the apartment. Lincoln wears his frock coat and carries the rest of his getup in a plastic bag. You in the middle of it? What the hell are you doing here? If you're in the middle of it, I can go. Or I can just be real quiet and just sing a song in my head or something. The Casa's off limits to you tonight. You know when we lived in that two-room place with a cement backyard and the front yard with nothing but trash in it? Mom and Pops would do it in the middle of the night and I would always hear them, but I would sing in my head because, I don't know, I couldn't bear to listen. You got to get out of here. I would make up all kinds of songs. Oh, sorry. You're all up in it. No sweat, bro. No sweat. Hey. Hey, Grace. How you doing? She ain't here yet, man. She's running late. And it's a good thing, too, because I ain't all dressed yet. You gonna spend the night with friends, right? Yeah. Booth waits for Lincoln to leave. Lincoln stands his ground. I lost my job. Huh? I come in here I come in there right on time like I do every day and that motherfucker gives me some song and dance about cutbacks and too many folks complaining. <laughs> Showed me the wax dummy. He's buying it right out of a catalog. I walked out still wearing my get up. I could go back in tomorrow. I could tell him I'll take another pay cut. That'll get him to take me back. Link, you're free. Don't go crawling back. <laughs> You're free at last, motherfucker. Now you can do anything you want. You're not tied down by that job. You can you can do something else. Some that pays better, maybe. You mean hustle. Maybe. Hey. Grace is on her way, so you gotta go. Lincoln flops into his chair. Booth is waiting for him to move. Lincoln doesn't budge. I'll stay until she gets here. I'll act nice. I won't embarrass you. I said you gotta go. What time's she coming? Hold on. I skipped ahead of page. She's late. She could be here any second. I'll meet her. I met her years ago. I'll meet her again. How late is she? She is supposed to be here at eight. 
It's after 2 a.m. She's, she's late. Maybe when she comes, you could put the blanket over me and I'll just pretend like I'm not here. I'll wait. And when she comes, I'll go. I need to sit down. I've been walking around all day. <laughs> Which goes to his bed and dresses hurriedly. Uh, pretty nice, right? The china, the silver, the crystal. It's great. Boosted? Yeah. Thought you went and spent your inheritance for a minute. You had me going. I was thinking, shit, Booth, three card. The three card's gone and spent his inheritance, and the gal is late. It's boosted. Every bit of it. But the waiting bullshit. She'll be here in a minute. Don't sweat it. Right? Booth comes to the table, sits, relaxes as best he can. How come I got a ham for boosted and I don't got a ham for throwing cards? It's sort of the same thing. You got to be quick and slick. Baby, you'll show me your moves sometimes. Look out the window. When you see Grace coming, I'll go. Cool. Because you jinx it. You'd really jinx it. Maybe you be in here j has jinxed it already. Nah, she's just a little late. You ain't jinxed nothing. <laughs> sits by the window, glancing out, waiting for his date. Lincoln sits in his recliner. He finds the whiskey bottle, sips from it. He then rummages around, finding the raggedy photo album. He looks through it. There we are at the house. Remember when we moved in? No. You were two or three. I was full. I was nine. We all thought it was the best fucking house in the world. Cement backyard and a front yard full of trash. Yeah. Don't be going down memory lane yet, man. Y'all jinx the vibe. I got going in here. Grace will be walking up in here any minute, wrinkling up her nose because you done jinxed up the joint with your raggedy ass collections. Sa. We had some great times in that house, bro. So we never did none of that shit. None of that. But we had uh, some good times. That row of nails I got you to line up behind dad's car. So when he backed out of the driveway to work. He came back that night. Only time I ever seen his face go red. Four flat tires and yelling about how the white man does sabotage him again. Woo! And neither, and neither oh. of us flinched. Neither of us let on that it had been us. It was dinner, right? What were we eating? Food. We were eating pork chops, mashed potatoes, and peas. I remember because I had to take them peas real hard to keep them from letting on. And I would glance over at you, not really glancing, not actually looking at your head. But I was looking at you out of the corner of my eye. Was sure he was going to keep finding us, and then we would have been whooped good. But I was going to keep glancing at you, and you was cool, man. Like nothing was going on. You was cool. Mm -mm -mm. What time was it? After three. You should call her. Something might have happened. Nah, man. I'm cool. She'll be here in a minute. Patience is a virtue. She'll be here. You look sad. Nah. I'm just, you know. I'm just cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Booth comes over, takes the bottle of whiskey, and pours himself a big glass full. He returns to the window looking at him drinking. They gave you a severance package at that job? A week's pay. Great. I blew it, spent it all. Oh, what? Just spent it. It felt good spending it. Felt really good. Like back in the day when I was really making money, throwing the cards all day and strutting, running all night. Didn't have to take no shit from no fool. Didn't have to worry about getting fired in favor of some damn wax dummy. I was the shit and they was my fools back in the day. Why do you think they left us, man? 
Um, Pops, I don't think it was about too much, you know? I don't, I don't think they liked us. Nah, that ain't it. I think there was something out there that they liked more than they liked us. And for years, they were struggling against moving towards that more like something. Each of them had a special something that they were struggling against. Moms had hers, pops had his, and they were struggling. We moved out of that nasty apartment into a house, a whole house. It weren't perfect, but it was a house and they'd bought it and they bought us that brought us there and everything we owned, figuring we could be a family in that house and them things, them two separate things each of them was struggling against would just leave them be. Them things would see the house and be impressed and just leave them be would see the job Pops had and how he shined his shoes every night before he went to bed, shining them shoes whether they needed it or not. And the thing he was struggling against would see all that and just let him be. And the thing Moms was struggling against, it would see the food on the table every night and listen to her voice when she'd read to us sometimes, the clean clothes, the buttons sewed on all right, right and it would just mm. let her be, just let us all be. Just regular people living in a house. That weren't too much to ask. At least we was grown when they split. 16 and 11 they ain't grown. 16 grown? Almost. Now it's okay because you was there. Shit, man. It ain't like they both one day both together packed all they shit up and left us so they could have fun in the sun and shit on some tropical island and you and me we would have grubbed in them and forever they didn't leave here i am okay they didn't leave together that makes it difficult. She left two years go by. They left, he left, like neither of them couldn't handle it no more. She split, then he split. Like the whole family, mortgage bills going to work, things just got too much. And I don't blame them. You don't see me holding down a steady job because it's bullshit and I know it. And I seen it because it cracked them up. And it ain't going nowhere. It ain't right trying to make things for myself into one woman and just one man. Grace wants me like that. One woman, rubber wearing motherfucker. Shit, not me. She gonna walk in here looking all hot and trying to get me to fucking be on her shit? No sweat. How much she gonna try to give me before she gives me mine? Shit. Mom's told me I shouldn't never get married. She told me the same thing. They gave us each 500 bucks, then they cut out. That's what I'm going to do. Give my kids 500 bucks, then cut out. That's the way to do it. You don't got no kids. I'm going to have kids, then I'm going to cut them out. Leaving each of your offspring 500 bucks as you're splitting. Yeah, just goes to show mom and pops had some agreement between them. How so? They stopped talking to each other. They stopped screwing each other, but they had an agreement somewhere in there. When it looked like they all had was hate, they sat down and did the split budget. When mom split, she gave me $500 rolled up and tied up tight on one of my nylon sockings. She tells me to put it in a safe place, to spend it only in case of an emergency, and to not tell nobody. I got it. Not even you. Two years later, Pop splits, and before he goes, he slips me 10 fitties and a clean handkerchief. handkerchief. Hide this somewhere, it's good. Don't go blowing it. Don't tell no one you got it, especially that booth. They'd be scheming all together all along. They left separately, but they was in agreement. 
Maybe they arrived at the same place at the same time. Maybe they renewed their wedding bells. Maybe they got another family. Maybe they got two new kids, two boys, different than us, though. Better. Maybe. The glasses are empty. The whiskey bottle is empty, too. Booth takes the champagne bottle from the ice tub. He pops the cork and pours drinks for his brother and himself. It didn't mind them leaving us, because you was there. That's why I'm hooked on us working together. If we could work together, it would be like old times. They split, and we got that room downtown. You were done with school, and I stopped going. And we had to run around do an odd job just to keep the lights on and the heat going and the child protection bitch off our backs. It was you and me against the world, Link. It could be like that again. Throwing the cards ain't as easy as it looks. It ain't stupid. When you hung with us back then, you was just on the sidelines. The perspective from the sidelines is the perspective of a customer. There was all kinds of things you didn't know nothing about. Lonnie would entice folks to, into playing the game as they walked by. The two folks on either side of you Looked like they was playing, but they was only pretending to play. Just to generate excitement. You was moving the cards as fast as you could, hoping their hands was to be move, moving faster than the customer's eyes. Sometimes you won, sometimes you lost. What else is there to know? The customer is actually called the mark. You know why? Because he's... The one you got your eye on. You mark him with your eye. Am I right? Let me show you a few moves. If you pick up these, you'll have a chance. You plan? Get the cards and set it up. No shit. Set it up. Set it up. In a flash, Booth clears away the romantic table setting by gathering it all up in the tablecloth and tossing it aside. As he does so, he reveals the table underneath, the two stacked Monty Mill crates and the cardboard playing surface. Booth holds the deck of cards out to Lincoln, who hesitates for a moment, then grabs them, quickly choosing three and laying them out. The deuce of spades is the card to watch. I work with the deuce of hearts. But spades is cool. There's the dealer. The stick man, the sides, the lookout, and the mark. I'll be the diller. I'll be the looking. Let me be the lookout, right? I'll keep an eye out for the cops. I got my piece in my pants. You got it on you right now? I always carry it. Even on a date in your own home? You never know, man. So I'm the lookout. Give me your piece. Booth gives Lincoln his gun. Lincoln moves the little wooden chair to face right in front of the setup. He then puts the gun on the chair. We don't need nobody standing on the corner watching for cops because there ain't none. That'll be the lookout. I'll be the stick-up man. Stickman knows the game inside out. You ain't there yet, but you will be. You want to learn good. Be my side man. Playing along with the dealer, moving the mark to lay his money down. You want to learn, right? I'll be the side. Good. First thing you learn is what is. Next thing you learn is what ain't. You don't know what is. You don't know what ain't. You don't know shit. Right. What you looking at? I'm sizing you up. Oh, yeah? Dealer always size up the crowd. I'm your side, Link. I'm on your team. Hold on. Whoopsie, whoopsie. I'm on your team. You don't go sizing up your team. You save looks like that for your mark. <laughs> Dealer always sizes up the crowd. Everybody out there is part of the crowd. 
His crew is part of the crowd. He himself is part of the crowd. Dealer always sizes up the crowd. Lincoln looks Booth over some, um, some more, and then looks around at an imaginary crowd. Then what? Then what? Dealer don't want to play. Bullshit, man. Come on, you promised. That's the dealer's attitude. He acts like he don't want to play. He holds back and the crowd with their eagerness to see a skill and their willingness to take a chance and their greediness to win his cash. The larceny in their hearts all goad him on and push him to throw his cards. Although, of course, the dealer has been wanting to throw the cards all along. Only he don't never show it. Mm, that's some shit, sneaky shit, Link. It sets the mood. You want to have them in your hand before you deal a hand, okay? Cool. Okay. Right. You sizing me up again? There's two parts to throwing the cards. Both parts are fairly complicated. The moves and the grooves, the talk and the walk, the patter and the pitter pat, the rap and the flap, what you're doing with your mouth and what you're doing with your hands. I got the words down pretty good. You need to work on both. Okay. A good looking walk and a dynamite talk captivates crowd's attention. The mark focuses with two organs primarily, his eyes and his ears. Leave one out, you lose your shirt. Captivate both, you're golden. So them times I see you lose, them times I see then the mark best you, that was a time that when your hands weren't last enough or your partner weren't enough you can say that so there was plenty of time lincoln moves around. the cards around you see what i'm doing don't look at my hands man look at my eyes know what, what it, is. know what is and know what ain't what is my eyes what ain't my hands Look at my eyes, not my hands. And you standing there thinking, how the fuck I gonna learn how to throw the cards if I be looking at his eyes? Look into my eyes and get your focus. Don't think about learning how to throw the cards. Don't think about nothing. Just look into my eyes. Get your focus. They're red. Look into my eyes. You've been crying. Just look into my eyes, fool. Now, look down at the cards. I've been moving and moving and moving them around. Ready? Yeah. Okay, Sideman. The Mark's got his eye on you. You're going to show him it's easy. Okay. Pick out the deuce of spades. Don't pick it up. Just point to it. This one, right? Don't ask the dealer if you're right, man. Point to your card with confidence. That one. Flip it over, man. Lincoln flips over the card. It is, in fact, the deuce of spades. Uh, Booth struts around gloating like a rooster. M Lincoln is mildly crestfallen. Am I right? Or am I right? Make room for three card. Here comes the champ. Cool. Stay focused. Now we're going to add the second element. Listen. Lincoln moves the cards and speaks in a low hypnotic voice. Lean in close and watch me now. Who see the black card? Who see the black card? I see the black card. Black card's the winner. Pick the black card, that's the winner. Pick the red card, that's the loser. Pick the other red card, that's the other loser. Pick the black card, you pick the winner. Watch me as I throw the cards. Here we go. Who see the black card? Who see the black card? You pick the red card, you pick a loser. You pick the other card, red card, you pick a loser. You pick the black card, the deuce of spades, you pick a winner. Who sees the deuce of spades? The one who sees it never fades. Watch me now as I throw the cards. Red losers, black winner. Follow the deuce of spades. Chase the black deuce. Dark deuce will get you the win. One good pick will get you in. Two good picks, you're going to win. Ten will get you 20. 20 will get you 40. I'm going to show you the cards. 
two red cards, but only one spade. Dark winner in the center and the red losers on the sides. Pick a red card, you got a loser. Pick the other red card, you got a loser. Pick the black card, you got a winner. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me now. Okay, three card. You know which cards the deuce of spades? Yeah. You sure? Yeah? You sure? Or you just think you sure? Oh, you sure, you sure, huh? Was, was you watching Link's lightning fast express? Was you watching Link cause he the best? So you sure, huh? Point it out. Now place your bet and Link will turn over your card. What should I bet? Don't bet nothing, man. We're just playing. Slap me five and point out the deuce. Booth slaps Lincoln five, then points at a card which Lincoln flips over. It is, in fact, again the deuce of spades. Yeah, baby. Three card got the move. You didn't know Lil Bro had the stuff, huh? Think again, Link. Think again. You want to learn or you want to run your mouth? Thought you had fast hands. What's up? What happened to the Link's lightning fast express? Looks like a local train to me. That's your whole motherfucking problem. You're so busy running your mouth, you ain't never gonna learn nothing. You think you something, but you ain't shit. Ain't shit? I am the shit. Shit. Where's the dark juice? Right there, baby. Yes, baby. Okay, three card, cool. Let's switch. Take the cards and show me what you got. Go on. Don't touch the cards too heavy. Just, it's a light touch, like you're touching Grace's skin or whatever, man. Just a light touch, like a whisper. Like a whisper. Oh, Booth moves the cards around in an awkward imitation of his brother. Good. Yeah. All right. Look into my eyes. Booth's speech is loud and his movements are jerky. He's doing worse than when he threw the cards at the top of the play. Watch me close. Watch me close now. Who see the black card? Who see the black card? Who see the black card? Here it is. Black card is a winner. Black card is a winner. You pick the black card. Pick the red card. You are loser. There's the loser. There's the red card. There's the other loser. There's the black card. The winner. Watch me close. Watch me close now. Three card throws the card. Light me back. Three card, that's me, and I'm a fast. Watch me throw, cause here I go. Look at here, look at the black card. Yeah, I see, I see you see in the black card. <laughs> Lincoln doubles over laughing. Booth puts on his coat and pockets his gun. What? Nothing, man, nothing. What? You're just, you're just a little wild with it. You talk like that on the street, cards or no cards, and they'll lock you up, man. Shit. Reminds me of that time when you hung with us and we let you try being the stick because you wanted it so bad. The hustle was so simple, remember? I told you that when I put my hand in my left pocket, you was to get the mark to pick the card on the side. You got to think in something like Link's left means my left some dyslexic, dyslexic shit and turned the wrong card. There was 800 bucks on the line and you fucked it up. But it was cool, little bro, because we made the money back. It worked out cool. So yeah, I said a light touch, little bro. Throw the cards light, like a whisper. Like Grace's skin. Like Grace's skin. What time is it? Lincoln holds up his watch. Booth takes a look. Bitch, bitch. <gasps> She said she was going to show up around eight. Eight a fucking clock. Maybe she meant 8 a.m. Yeah. She going to come all up in my place talking about how she loved me. How she can't stop thinking about me. Another mean she shut it, shit up in her mother's house. Man's nothing in her another mean stick on her breath maybe something happened to her 
something happened to her, all right. She's trying to make a chump out of me. I ain't her chump. I ain't nobody's chump. Sit. I'll go to the payphone on the corner. I'll. The world puts its foot in your face and you don't move. You tell the truth, the world does to keep stepping on you. But I'm my own man, Link. I ain't you. Booth goes out, slamming the door behind him. You got that right. After a moment, Link, Lincoln picks up the cards. He moves them around fast, faster, faster. Scene six, Thursday night. The room looks empty as if neither brother is home. Lincoln comes in. He is high on liquor. He strides in, leaving the door slightly ajar. Ta-da! Ta-da, motherfucker, ta-da. Booth, uh, three card. You hear? Nope? Good. Just as well. <laughs> he pulls an enormous wad of money from his pocket. He counts it slowly and luxuriously, arranging and smoothing the bills and sounding the amounts under his breath. He neatly rolls up the money, secures it with a rubber band, and puts it back in his pocket. He relaxes in his chair, then takes the money out again, counting it all over again, but this time quickly with the touch of an expert hustle. You didn't go back, Link. You got back. You got it back. You got your shit back in the saddle, man. You got back in business. Walking in Lucky's and you've seen how they was looking at you. Lucky starts pouring for you when you walk in. And the women, you see how they was looking at you? Bought drinks for everybody. Bought drinks for Lucky. Bought drinks for Lucky's damn dog shit. And the women, he hanging on, be hanging on me and purring. And I be feeling that old call, the wild calling. I got more phone numbers in my pockets between the time I walked out that door and the time I walked back and than I got in my whole entire life because my shit is back. I back better than it was when it left to shoot. Who the man? Link. That's right. Purring all up on me and letting me touch them and promise them shit. Three of them, sweethearts, in the restroom on my dick, all at once, and I was there. My shit was there, and Cookie just went out of my mind, which is cool, which is very cool. Three of them fighting over his shit, because they knew I'd been throwing the cards. They'd see me on the corner with the old crew, or if they ain't seen me with their own eyes, they'd heard word. Links the stink. They'd heard word and they see the sad face on some poor sucker on a tear in the eye of some stupid fucking tourist. And they figured it was me who just took the sucker's last dime. It was me who had all the sucker's loot. They knew. They knew. Booth appears in the room. He was standing behind the screen, unseen all this time. He goes to the door, soundlessly just stands there. And they was all in lucky shit. They was waiting for me to come in from my last throw. Can't take too many fools in one day. It's bad luck, Link. So they was all waiting in there for me to come in the door and let the liquor start blowing and the music start going and let the boys who don't have the balls to get nothing but a regular job and a weekly paycheck, let them crowd around and get in somehow on the excitement and make way for the ladies so they can run their hands on my claws and feel the magic and imagine the man with plenty to go around living and breathing underneath. They all thought I was down and out. They all thought I was a no count has been lost cause motherfucker. But I got my shit back. That's right. They stepped on me and kept right on stepping. Not no more. Who the man? God damn it. Who the? Who closes the door? Another evening to remember, huh? Uh-oh. Am I here? Yeah, we got you. Oh, my bad. You're good. I might be on the wrong page. Hold on. We're, we're in the middle of 88. 88? Okay. Oh, shit. Sorry, guys. You're, you're totally fine. Okay. Do we pass over all the... Uh, Booth, Lincoln, another night to remember. Oh, yeah, we're right yeah, there. Man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I was too far off. 
Had me a memorable evening myself. I got news. What you been up to? Your news first. It's good. Yeah? Yeah. Go ahead then. Grace got down on her knees, down on her knees, man. Asked me to marry her. Shit. Amazing Grace. Lucky you, man. And guess where she was? I mean, while I was waiting for her. She was over at her house watching TV. I told her I'd come over Thursday, and I got it all wrong. And I was thinking I said Wednesday. And here I was sitting my ass off, and all she was doing was over at her house just watching TV. How about that? She wants to get married right away. She's tired of waiting. Bills her clock is ticking and shit. Wants to have a baby. Mm. But don't look so glum, man. We gonna have a boy. We gonna name it after you. That's great, man. That's really great. Lincoln. What's your news? Nothing. Mine's good news, huh? Yeah, real good news, bro. Bad news is, well, she is real set on us living together. She always did like this place. You're going to have to leave. Sorry. No sweat. This was only a temporary situation anyhow. No sweat, man. You got a new life opening up for you. No sweat. Grace is moving in today. I can leave right now. I don't mean to put you out. No sweat. I'll just pack up. Lincoln rummages around, finding a suitcase, and begins to pack up his things. Just like that, huh? No sweat? Yesterday, you lost your damn job. You don't got no cash. You don't got no friends, no nothing, but you clearing out just like that, and it's no sweat. You've been real generous, and you and Grace need me gone, and it's time I found my own place. No sweat? No sweat. Okay. I'll spill it. I got another job, so getting my own place ain't going to be so bad. You got a new job? Se Doing what? Security guard. A security guard? How about that? Lincoln continues packing the few things he has. He picks up a whiskey bottle. Do, 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 do. Okay, go ahead. Take the medicine, bro. You're going to need it more than me. I got you now. I got my love to keep me warm and shit. You're going to have to get some kind of work, or are you going to let Grace support you? I got planned. She might want you now, but she won't want you for long if you don't get some kind of job. She's a smart chick, and she cares about you. But she ain't going to let you treat her like some pack mule while she's out working her ass off and you're laying up in here scheming and dreaming to cover up the fact that you don't got no skills. Grace is very cool with who I am and what I am, where I'm at. Thank you. It was just some advice. But hey, you're doing great just like you're doing. Booth, booth. Okay, so when Pops left, he didn't take nothing with him. I thought that was fucked up. He was drunk. Everything he did was always half regular and half fucked up. Why do you leave his clothes though? Even drinks gotta wear clothes. Or even Why drunks gotta wear clothes. Why do you leave his clothes? Why do you leave us? He was a drunk, bro. He Whatever, right? I mean, you ain't going to figure it out by thinking about it. Just call it one of the great unsolved mysteries of ex existence. Mom's had a man on the side. Yeah? Pops had side shit going on, too, more than once. He would take me with him when he went to visit them. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes he'd let me meet the ladies. They was all very nice, very polite. Most of them real pretty. Sometimes he'd let me watch. Most of the time, I was just outside on the porch or in the lobby or in the car waiting for him, but sometimes he'd let me watch. 
What was that like? Nothing. Like, it wasn't like nothing. He made it seem like it was this big deal, this great thing he was letting me witness, but it <laughs> like nothing. One of his ladies liked me, so I would do her after he'd done her. Uh, the sly, on the sly though. He'd be laying there spent and sleeping and snoring and her and me would be sneaking it. Yeah. It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> Lincoln takes his crumpled Abe Lincoln get up from the closet. Isn't sure what to do with it. I'm going to miss you. Coming home in that group. I even got a picture of you in it for the album. Hell, I'll put it on. Get the camera. Get the camera. Yeah, boy. What the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, yo? Booth, Booth <laughs> scrambles around the apartment and finds the camera. Lincoln quick, quickly puts on the getup, including two thin smears of white pancake makeup, more like war paint than white face. They didn't fire me because I wasn't no good. They fired me because they was cutting back. Me getting dismissed didn't have no reflection on my performance. And I was a damn good, honest Abe, considering. Yeah, you look good, man. Really great. Fix your hat. Get in the, the light. Smile. Lincoln didn't ever smile. Sure he smiled. No, he didn't, man. You've seen the pictures of him. In all his pictures, he was real serious. You got a new job. You're having a good day, right? Yeah. So smile. Snapshot's going to look pretty stupid with me. Booth takes a picture. <gasps> this will look great in the album. Let's take one together, you and me. No, thanks. Save the film for the wedding. This wasn't a bad job. I just outgrew it. I could put in a word for you down there. Maybe when business picks up again, they'd hire you. No, thanks. That shit ain't for me. I ain't pretending to be something I ain't. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck that. <laughs> I, was, I was just sitting there in the getup. I wasn't pretending nothing. What was going in your head, yo? <laughs> I would make up songs and shit. And think about women. Sometimes. Cookie. Sometimes. And how the came, how she came over here and one night looking for you. I was at Lucky's. And she didn't know that. I was drinking. All she knew is that she couldn't get it up. And uh, you couldn't get it up with her. So in her bed, she was tired of it, and she went back to the place where somebody knew that it wouldn't be up, and maybe you could never come back to. Sorry. Rest. She <laughs> had me pour her a drink at 2 a.m., and I didn't want to. She didn't want to go back to you. And by having fun with her, I felt so bad because she should have went back to you. But she was with me having fun right here with me. And then, just like that, she changed her mind. And she went back to her house. But she had me hooked. The part, bad part of it was that I fought down every bit of fucking getting with her. Because you beat down years of being with her. And there was dead stuff that, but mine keeps coming up for another round. And that bad part of me took her from taking her clothes off because I wanted her to take her clothes off. But whatever, she just carried off onto the bed and Link, your cookie, your cookie wasn't there in my bed when I needed it. But it wasn't just the bad part of me. It was all of me, man. It was all of me. And I had her, your damn fucking wife, man, right in that bed. Pick up on that shit. Mm -hmm. I used to think about her all the time, but I don't, I don't think about her anymore. I told her she dubbed you. I'd marry her. 
But I changed my mind because she's slut. I don't think about her anymore. I don't blame you. I wouldn't go back. I would not go back. Mm -mm. Fuck that bitch. Nope. Because you can't. No matter what you do, you can't go back to a fucking slut like that because it's who you was. Best you can do is pretend to go back to your old self. You're out of your mind. Yeah, straight up. Straight up. And you know what, G? Least I'm still me. Least I'm still me. Least I work. You never did like to work. You better come up with some kind of way to bring some things here. Grace will drop you like a hot rock. Oh, I got plans, bitch. Yeah, you're going to throw the cards, right? That's right. You double left-handed motherfucker. You don't stand a chance and I'll get out there throwing no cards. You scared. You scared. I got your shit. You ain't never going to do nothing. <laughs> you scared. You got to throw. And I'm going to kick your ass like a boss. Kick your ass You're like your wife. She kicked your ass. Then I'm going to go out there and I'm going to throw the cards like you wish you could have done it because I'm going to kick your ass and I'm going to be the shit. Uh, I'm going to set it up and you going to throw. Are you scared, bitch? Mm. I'm gone. Lincoln goes to leave. Fuck that. Damn. I didn't know it went so deep for you, little bro. <laughs> Set up the cards. Thought you was gone. Set it up. I'm going to kick your ass, motherfucker. Set it up. Booth hurriedly sets up the milk crates and cardboard top. Lincoln throws the cards. Lean in close and watch me now. Who see the black card? Who see the black card? I see the black card. Black card's the winner. Pick the black card. That's the winner. Pick the red card. That's the loser. Pick the other red card. That's the other loser. Pick the black card and pick the winner. Who see the black card? Who see the black card? Who pick the red card? You pick a loser. You pick that red card. You pick a loser. You pick the black card. The deuce of spades. You pick a winner. Who sees the deuce of spades? The one who sees it never fades. Watch me now as I throw the cards. Red losers, black winner, follow the deuce of spades, chase the black deuce. Dark deuce will get you the win. 10 will get you 20. 20 will get you 40. One good pick will get you and two good picks and you gun win. Okay, man. Where's the black deuce? Booth points to a card. Lincoln flips it over. It is the deuce of spades. Huh. Lincoln turns over the other two cards, looking them confusedly. Raven, you with us? Yeah, who the man? <laughs> yeah, Are that's exactly right. Yeah. The uh, we, yeah, there we go. All right, cool. Lincoln turns over the other two cards, looking them confusedly. Huh. <laughs> Who the man leak? Who the who the man leak? You the man, man. I got your shit down. Right. Right. All you saying is right. You was out on the street throwing just today, weren't you? You wasn't going to tell me. Tell you what? That you was out throwing. I was going to tell you, sure. Can't go and leave my little bro out the loop, can I? Didn't say nothing because I thought you heard. Did all right today, but I'm still rusty, I guess. But hey, you're getting good. <laughs> but I'll get out here on the street and still fuck up, won't I? You seem pretty good, bro. You got to do it for real, man. I'm doing it for real. I am. And you're getting good. I don't know. I didn't really feel real. I kind of felt, well, it didn't feel real. <laughs> We're missing the essential elements, the crowd, the street, the traffic sounds, all that. 
vermouth is something else too. Uh, the doing that all really make it real. What's up, bro? The cash. It's just bullshit without the money. Put some money down on the table. Oh my bad. And mm. then it'll be real. Mm-hmm. Then it'd be real. And don't be looking all glum like that. I know you got money. A whole pocket full. Put it down. You scared of losing it to the man chump? Put it down lest you think the kid who got to two left hands is going to give you a left knock. Put it down, brah. Put it down. Lincoln takes the roll of bills from his pocket and places it on the table. How much you got there? 500 bucks. Cool. <laughs> Ready? Does it feel real? Yeah. Clean slate. Take it from the top. One good pickle. Get you in. Two good picks. Uh, get you in. Go ahead. Watch me now. Whoa, man. Whoa. You think I'm a chump? No, I don't. You ain't going full out. I was just getting started. But when you got good and started, you wasn't going full out. You wasn't going to go all out. You wasn't going to do the pussy shit, not the real shit. I put my money down. Money makes it real. But not if you don't put no money down to the match it. You don't got no money. I got money. You ain't <laughs> worked in years. You don't got shit. I got money. What you been doing? Skimming off my weekly paycheck and squirreling it away? I got money. They stand there sizing each other up. Booth breaks away, going over to his hiding place from which he gets an old nylon stocking with money in the toe. I'm not holding the money secure. You know, she was putting stuff in plastic bags. She was putting her stuff in plastic bags, not putting, but shoving. She was shoving her stuff in plastic bags, and I was standing in the doorway watching her as she was busy shoving that stuff. Didn't see me. I ain't made a money, and that's what she was always saying. The guy she had on the side, that guy she had on the side. Well, I would watch and I would catch them together sometimes at home. Figured I could tell mom I was sick and cover my ass quiet. He had her bent over. They both had all their clothes on like they was about to do something like go out dancing because they were so dressed to the nines. But, uh... That last minute, his pants had fallen down and her dress had fallen up and they had ended up doing something else. They didn't see me come in and they didn't see me watching them and they didn't see me going out. That was a Thursday. Something told me on a school day that a Thursday and a sure enough, he was always clean up and fresh smelling nice. <gasps> Serving up dinner. And Pops would grab his car. She was all bright and she would look at me. 
Like she didn't know I was, like she didn't know I knew, but she was asking me not to tell. Somehow she was asking me to, oh, <laughs> who knows? She was telling, talking to him and telling him one day, her side man, her Thursday dude, her back doll man, she needed some money for something. She needed some kind of problem that had to be mistaken and some kind of mistake needed clearing up. And she was asking Mr. Thursday for some money to take care of, uh, uh, I made a money, he says. He was putting his foot down. And there she was two months later, not showing yet. Maybe she had gotten rid of it. Maybe she had it. Maybe stuck it along with her other things in that there plastic bag while he wasted outside the car and the motor running. She must have known I was gone in on her this time because she had my pail, my inheritance. She had it all for me, $500 in a nylon stocking, huh? He places the stuffed nylon stocking on the table across from Lincoln's money roll. Now it's real. Don't put that down. Throw the fucking cards. I don't want to play. Throw the fucking cards, man. Two red cards, but only one black. Pick the black, you pick the winner. All the cards are face down. You point out the cards and then you move them around. Now watch me now. Now watch me real close. Put the winning deuce down in the center. Put the loser reds on either side. Then you just move the cards around. Move them slow or move them fast. Link's the king, he gonna last. Where's the deuce of spades? He chooses a card and chooses correctly. Ha! One good pick will get you in two good picks and you gonna win. I know, man. I know. I'm just doing the talk. Throw the fucking cards. Lincoln throws the cards. Lean in close and watch me now. Who see the black card? Who see the black card? I see the black card. Black card's the winner. Pick the black card. That's the winner. Pick the red card. That's the loser. Pick the other red card. That's the other loser. Pick the black card. You pick the winner. Watch me as I throw the cards. Here we go. I'm going to show you the cards. Two red cards, but only one spade. Dark winner in the center and the red losers on the sides. Pick a red card. You got a loser. The other red card, you got a loser. Pick the black card, you got a winner. Watch me, watch me, watch me now. Who see the black card? Who see the black card? You pick the red card, you pick a loser. You pick the red card, you pick a loser. You pick the black card, the deuce of spades, you pick a winner. Who sees the deuce of spades? The one who sees it never fades. Watch me now as I throw the cards. Red losers, black winners, follow the deuce of spades. Chase the black deuce. Dark deuce will get you the win. Okay, three card. You know which card's the deuce of spades? This is for real, man. man. You pick wrong, and I'm in your wad, and I keep mines. I pick right. I got your shit. Yeah. Plus, I bet you for real. Yeah. You think we're really brothers? Huh? I know we brothers, but is we really brothers, you know, blood brothers or not? You, me, what do you think? I think we're brothers. Lincoln. Lincoln. Oh. Lincoln. Go ahead, man. Where's the deuce? In a flash, Booth points out a card. You sure? I'm sure. Yeah? Don't touch the cards now. I'm sure. 
The two brothers lock eyes. Lincoln turns over the card that Booth selected, and Booth, in a desperate break of concentration, glances down to see that he has chosen the wrong card. Deuce of hearts, bro. I'm sorry. The deuce of spades was this one. I guess all this minds. He slides the money towards himself. You were almost right. Better luck next time. Ain't your fault if your eyes ain't fast. And you can't help it if you got two left hands, right? Throwing cards ain't the whole world. You got other shit going for you. You got grace. Right? What's the matter? Man. What's up? Nothing. It takes a certain kind of understanding to be able to play this game. I still got the moves, don't I? Yeah, you still got the moves. Lincoln can't help himself. He chuckles. I ain't laughing at you, bro. I'm just laughing. <laughs> Shit, there's so much to this game. This game is, there's just so much to it. Lincoln, still chuckling, flops down on the easy chair. He takes up the nylon stocking and fiddles with the knot. <laughs> Whoa, she sure did tie this up tight, didn't she? Yeah, I ain't opened it since she gave it to me. You're kidding. $500, you ain't never opened it? Shit. Sure is tied tight. She said, here's 500 bucks, and you didn't undo the knot to get a look at the cash? You ain't needed to take a peek all these years? Shit. I, I would have opened it right away. Just a little peek. I've been saving it. Oh, don't open it, man. How come? You want it, man. You don't got to open it. We got to see what's in it. You know what's in it. Don't open it. You're a chum pro. There could be millions in here. There could be nothing. I'll open it. Don't. Shit. This knot ain't coming out. I could cut it, but that would spoil the whole effect, wouldn't it? Shit. Sorry. I ain't laughing at you. I'm just laughing. There's so much about those cards. You think you can learn them just by watching and just by playing, but there is more to them cards than that. And tell me something, Myth of Three card. She handed you this stocking and you said there was money in it. And then she split and you say you didn't open it. How'd you know she was for real? She was for real. How you know? She could have been jiving you, bro. Jiving you that there really was money in this thing. Jiving you big time. It's like the cards. And oh, you certainly was persistent. But you was in such a hurry to learn the last move that you didn't bother learning the first one. That was your first mistake. Because it's the first move that separates the player from the played. And the first move is to know that there ain't no winning. Ta-da! It may look like you got a chance, but the only time you pick right is when the man lets you. And when it's the real deal, when it's the real fucking deal, bro, and the money's on the line, that's when the man won't want you picking right. He will want you picking wrong, so he will make you pick wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Ooh, you thought you was finally happening, didn't you? You thought your ship had come in or some shit, right? Thought you was a player, but I played you, bro. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Whatever, man. Damn, this knot is tough. I'm cut it. Lincoln reaches in his boot, pulling out a knife. He chuckles all the while. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, bro. I'm just laughing. Booth chuckles with him. Lincoln holds the knife high, ready to cut the stocking. Turn your head. You may not want to look. Booth turns away slightly. They both continue laughing. Booth brings the knife down to cut the stocking. I popped her. Huh? Grace. I popped her. Grace. Who the fuck she thinks she's doing me like she does? Tell me I don't got nothing going on. I showed her what I got going on. I popped her good, twice, three times, whatever. She's dead. You weren't wearing my ring I gave her. Said it was too small. Fuck that. Said it hurt her. Fuck that. She said it was on to bigger things. Fuck 
that she's alive not to worry. She ain't gonna live out the rest of her days easy. She's alive. She, she's dead. She's dead. I'm gonna give you back your stocking, man. Here, bro. Only so long I can't stand that little brother shit. Can only take it so long. I'm telling you. Take it back, man. That little bro shit had to go. Cool. Like booth wit. Here, three card. That booth shit is over. Three cards, the man now. I'm going to give you your stocking back, three card. Who the man now, huh? Who the man now? Think you fuck with me? Motherfucker, think again. Motherfucker, think again. Think you can take me like I'm just going to chump? Like I'm just some kind of chump? Some two left-handed pussy dick breath motherfucking chump? Who you think can take that and go laugh at it? You ain't laughing at me. You is just laughing bunch. You ain't bullshit. You know it? Here, take it. I ain't gonna be needing it. Go on. You... You won't open it. No, thanks. Open it. Open it. Open it. Open it. Open it up, brah. Lincoln brings the knife down to cut the stocking. In a flash, Booth grabs Lincoln from behind. He pulls his gun and thrusts it into the left side of Lincoln's neck. They stop there poised. Don't. Booth shoots Lincoln. Lincoln slumps forward, falling out of his chair and under the floor. He lies there dead. Booth paces back and forth like a panther in a cage holding his gun. Think you can take my shit? My shit? That shit was mine. I kept it. Saved it. All this while. Through thick and through thin. Through fucking thick and through fucking thin, motherfucker. And you just gonna come up in here and mock my ship and call me too left-handed talking about my, how she could have been jiving me then go and steal from me? My inheritance? And you know it? You had your own. And you blew it. You blew it, motherfucker. You saved mines and you blew yours thinking you had all that in your shit. And I saved mine. You ain't gonna be needing your fucking money roll no more, Dice, motherfucker. So I will pocket it. Thank you. Watch me close. Watch me close now. I'm going to go out there and make a name for myself that don't have nothing to do with you. And three cards going to be in everybody's head and in everybody's mouth like Link was. I'm going to take back my inheritance too. It was mine anyhow. Even when you stole it from me. And it was still mine because she gave it to me. She didn't give it to you, and I've been saving it all the while. As he bends to pick up the money-filled stocking, he, then he just crumples. As he sits next to Lincoln's body, the money-filled stocking falls away. Booth holds <gasps> Lincoln's body, hugging him close. He sobs. Ah! End of play. Wow, thank you everybody. Yeah, thank Great you. job. Holy cow, what a play. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all did so good. Oh my goodness. That wow. Good that was fun. Cathartic to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good. Oh my goodness. Um so uh, one one of the things that we really love doing with uh, with the Miss Green Book Club, of course, is is we want to use whatever little platform we have to try and do a little bit of good in the world. And so this week, the uh, the charity that we are promoting is Operation USA. Um, they are uh, a a nonprofit organization. They support health and education programs in order to help children and families at home and abroad 
recover and thrive in the wake of disasters, disease, violence, and endemic poverty. So they wonderful. are, we think they're, they're a wonderful organization, particularly, you know, after reading this play. Um, their website is opusa.org. Um, now and in the future, those of you who are listening, please consider uh, looking them up and donating. Um, I am incredibly grateful to both you, Raven, and you, Tamika, for joining us tonight. Again, absolutely fantastic job. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. Yeah, Tom and, and Slim, anything else that you wanted to add? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Um, we are going to be doing a discussion of this. I believe uh, we, it's planned right now for a week from today on Monday. Um, we may end up bumping into like a Tuesday or something like that, depending on people's availabilities, but we'll keep everyone I updated. I definitely want to be part of the discussion. This was a fun one. So, oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, we would, so we would absolutely adore having you. Um, so fun. All right. Well, well fantastic. Y'all have an absolutely fantastic evening, and we will go ahead and end the recording. Feel free to hang out if you would like to, but... <laughs>